here, the Frugal Crafter. I got a request from a um, Facebook uh, friend in the Frugal Crafter community to paint a uh, picture of a daffodil that she had taken um, that was kind of with the light shining through the petals with a dark background. So I decided that um, that would be a wonderful thing to work on today. So the first thing we're going to start with, and I'm drawing with a blue-gray um, watercolor pencil, so I don't have any lines, but you can use a... Um, a regular pencil if you want to and I'm just going to sketch on my flower here so I've got a circle to begin with hopefully you can see that the other, the other reason I'm doing this with a pencil is because I know I'm going to do a Payne's gray background so I want to make sure that um, this will dissolve and I can draw dark enough for you to see it because I don't want to have big lines when I'm done so I'm actually going to start with this stem it's just going to kind of bend back here and there's a couple little buds coming up I want to put those in because I like having three elements here it just makes it look a little more pleasing and then we've got this area here where you can see that there's um, some shadow there the front of the with a with the center of the flower is kind of um, keeping the light from passing through completely and then we're going to get six petals around here so again I like to go with my compass analogy I just kind of put my petals around as if I am working around a compass I go across from each other um, and I just try to capture the unique shape of each petal but I just find if I if I kinda go back and forth I get a much easier it's much easier for me to space them out properly and these petals are going to be yellow uh, very very pale pale so I want to be careful not to get too many lines um, where I don't want them and my the tips of the petals are pretty much just going out to the um, tip of the circle all right so there I've got my basic sketch in now uh, what I want to do is grab a large brush you can use a flatter around it doesn't matter something that will carry quite a bit of water and I'm going to wet the background and um, you might want to tape this all the way around so you have a nice border when you're done I was actually looking for my board I cleaned yesterday so after my shameful uh, desk yesterday that I shared on my um, deli paper video I decided okay I've got to clean I can't even work and if I can't even work in an area because it's too messy then it's really too messy and uh, so I cleaned and was so excited to come down here and work and then I was looking for my little piece of foam cord that is just the right size for my watercolor cards and I could not find it anywhere and that's got to be my most frequently lost item and it's like I, I turn around I stick it on the shelf behind me I could not find where I put it. I must have put something on top of it or something. I'm still, I know I'm going to find it as soon as I turn the video camera off. That's just the way it goes. So I just take a couple pieces of tape and tape this down to my little um, cutting board here. And uh, that will have to suffice for today. But I do think a nice white border would look pretty on this as well. And the reason I'm wetting the background paper is because the paint's only going to flow where the paper's wet. It's going to follow the path of least resistance. And you know you've got it wet if you can tip it and you see that it's all nice and shiny. And um, I'm going to use Payne's Gray, and it's a color I don't use very often. But it's a really lovely, um, almost like blue-gray. <clears throat> so I'm just going to put that in there. And I'm going to let it kind of flow around. I'm not a big fan of black or gray generally, but I do like the Payne's Gray because it's almost like an indigo. And I really want a rich, saturated, dark color, so that's why I'm not mixing. Um, because I didn't have any other colors in this picture that would make a nice gray. If I was using like crimson and emerald, those would make just the right gray that I wanted, but I didn't want to just mix two arbitrary colors, so I'm going to use a Payne's gray. And then I'll use that also to darken up my sap green, because it's almost like a blue that I'll be using for the, um, uh, for the little buds there. And I'm just making an uneven kind of border. Um, but if you're taping your paper, then you'll have a nice white border if you do a nice even taping job around the edge. And I find that doing the background first is a little bit less intimidating than painting the flower and then trying to uh, go in and around. Because if you've, if you've painted the flower and it looks great, you're not going to want to risk messing it up by going in and putting the background. So I like to do that first. I generally I like to put my dark values in first anyway because this, it's the same reason. I think that... Um, it can be a little scary to get those darks in after you've painted something and it looks really good So just get it right out of the way to begin with and uh, And I think that you can be a little bolder with it because generally that's what I see if I see um, Something not working. It's usually the values aren't right or the values aren't dark enough. There's not enough contrast so 
I can touch my little Kindle screen there to make it... Whoops! Oh my goodness, I just went to the wrong... Hold on a second, I'm gonna have to pause this. I just lost my picture. I went to go to wake up my screen and uh, and I totally went to a different different uh, picture. But you know, I'll, I'll deal with that when we're letting this dry. I'll go find it again. <laughs> I'm telling you what, I shouldn't be allowed near technology. <laughs> Let's finish up here before this dries. And you know, you could use a smaller brush if this larger brush is uncomfortable. Um, bigger brush, of course, holds more paint so I can get more done in less time. But it can be a little tricky to get into these smaller areas. Alright, now if you want, if you if this color looks a little dull to you, you can you can uh, drop in some um, other colors, but I think that it's gonna, because it tends to be sedimentary, you can almost see that there's like little bits of blue kind of wanting to separate and um, kind of come out of this, so I think that's kind of cool. If you feel like you want a little more texture back there, something you can do is just kind of flick on some water and you'll get some cool um, mottled texture there and that will just be kind of interesting just like the, the picture showed us actually you'll get some interesting little blooms there so I'm gonna let this dry I'm gonna find my picture again and uh, we'll come back and finish painting this up okay we can kind of see how the um, how the background dried after I flicked the water on there it gave us kind of like little starburst patterns there those are called blooms it's what happens when you flick water onto an area that's uh, partially dry that's still damp and you'll get that cool ruffly edge bloom here the paper was dry underneath so you got more of a um, defined edge in here it was wetter underneath so you got a softer edge so that's why that happens all right so let's start by um, putting a wash of very very pale lemon yellow on the um, on the flower I'm just mixing some out with some water there so you can see all right we're gonna what we're gonna wet the petals and use whatever brush you like this is a number five or six this is a six round so you can use that. You could go up as high as a 10 round if it had a nice point on it. I wouldn't go much, I wouldn't go smaller than a 5. You don't want to get too fussy with your paints. So we have a lot of contrast here because of the way the light is shining through the petals. Um, that's why we painted around the flower and we didn't let any of that dark go in there. And I uh, just want to put some of that color right in there. I think I might want to warm that up a little bit with some yellow ochre. Let's go and grab some of that. Add some of that to some of the areas here. Remember, it's going to dry lighter. If you get into the background, just don't clean your brush off because you can, because that's a, that background color that we use is very sedimentary and uh, very easy to lift. So if you do get into the outside, you'll want to make sure that you clean your brush off because it will run back. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of texture just by lightly tapping it. And then these two buds down here, I'm going to paint with um, sap green mixed with a little bit of that um, Payne's Gray that we used. I just refilled my sap green so it's a little gooey. Let's mix those together till I get a nice dark. And there, that's a pretty color. And then over to this one here, and we are going to do the stem, but we don't want to do that until um, until the petals are dry or it's going to run into everything. All right. So now let's dry this, and I'll do that right here with the camera running because it won't really take very long. And then we're going to paint the center part of that flower that we indicated at first. We sketched it out. And I'll show, show you that while I'm drying. We're going to do that center part that's yellow, okay? That's the next part we're going to do. That's kind of the shadow from the uh, cup part of the daffodil. There we go. You can use a hair dryer too. You don't have to have a heat gun. Um, so for the center part, I'm going to use the lemon yellow and the yellow ochre. A little bit stronger of a mix though. The yellow ochre is a little bit warmer. And then um, I'm just going to kind of tap in, get a little too much water on my brush, tap that in. It's 
kind of a weird angle to be painting from, but it's very interesting and I think it's really kind of cool. And remember, even though it's an awkward angle and something you don't really see that often, photographed, nothing is any more harder than anything else to paint. So just keep that in mind, you know, when you're when you're painting, if you're feeling like um, you're just not getting it or whatnot. Now I feel like I want to add, I feel like I want a little something in there and it looks like I probably should add a little bit of gray. So let me just add a little bit of the gray on the palette with my yellow and see what that looks like. Because I, yep, it is kind of going green. So I was thinking green or gray. So that is going to a little bit of green, greenish when I mix that up. So I want to add a little bit of that onto some of the edges where I've got a little more shadow and that's going to help us help it look like we are looking at this from the back instead of from the uh, from the front. Let's give a little clarification. It's you know you train your eye to see these subtleties and then I think I also want to add some texture to the petals and I'm going to do that with my little bit of um, credit card scraper here. I just keep these old expired credit cards. can add some definition on the petals. You don't need a lot, just something to show a little definition. And then I'm going to do the green part of the stem here because it's not touching anything that is currently wet. So let's go into that sap green. Let's start here and just bring it on down and I can overlap the background a little bit because I want to make sure my edges are nice and clean. There we go and I want to shape that out a little bit. I feel like it's a little too uh, too skinny at the top. And let's see, I think I might add a little bit more, another layer of that over here too. That's looking a little too transparent and I know this paint is transparent but I want it to appear a little bit thicker a little bit more heavy so that it really makes the petals look very light and airy. And then I'm going to use a little bit more of the yellow over here and I'm just going to kind of flick in some veins from the uh, outside of the petals just to give it a little bit more life. So it's looking a little dull there. And then just kind of dab it so it's not too dark. It's a little bit it's a little bit too bright there. It's very subtle when you're when you're you're painting something that you know is yellow, but you're trying to make but it looks white and you're trying to make it look realistic. So there is a lot of, you know, painting and removing involved. But don't let that dissuade you from trying something challenging. Cuz it's it's all the same. It's all you're painting things. No things are harder than other things. You just got to figure out a way to approach it, approach it. Okay, so let's try that really quick. My cord tangled around my tripod, that'll be, <laughs> that'll make the camera shake. All right, and then I'm going to do very watery um, sap green and some of that yellow up there for the for this part in here. When you blot your brush off, you can kind of remove the water without taking too much paint out, which is handy. And I feel like I need a little bit more definition of how it's going into the flower there because it's kind of dark and hard to really tell. And then back to the credit card scraper and throw in some veining. And then I feel like I want to switch to a smaller brush. Got one right here. I feel like I want to do some more of the gray, but I feel like I want just a little bit more shadow on some of these petals. So I'm going to do that here with this really, really fine liner brush. It is a, um, what number is that? It's a number one liner. It's a folk art, folk artist's toll painting brush, actually. Um, I'll go ahead this for a long time. I don't uh, typically use really tiny brushes, so these tend to last me a long time. And uh, feel free to turn your paper around so you get it at a more comfortable angle. I'm kind of taped down to this uh, big board here, so it's not ideal. But turn your turn yours if you need to to make it to make it work well for you. And I'm um, there. 
I kind of like that all right so now let me just take a gander at this I think I'll peel it up for a second and have a look and see what else it needs I like it I like it pretty well even though there's no red, red represented I usually like to have a little red in my pictures but but I like that all right I'm feeling like I just need a little bit more maybe even a little bit more of the yellow with my um, liner brush here on the edges this kind of since I know I'm not gonna be getting the paper very wet now I can pull it up and just kind of hold it I don't have to worry about it buckling because I'm not going to be adding much water at this point and I do like to be able to turn it I gotta find my little piece of foam core <laughs> or cut another one another tutorial that's going to be coming up I'm going to show you how to stretch watercolor paper so you can buy the thinner stuff because I think it's better to buy a higher quality paper and uh, get a lighter weight than to buy a cheaper paint paper with a heavier weight um, and but if you know how to stretch your paper then you can use the uh, lesser expensive thinner stuff and um, it'll still look really really good and I feel like I need a little something else on that stem I feel like it's just needs a little definition it's a little bit I don't know oh yeah I got that little that little part here what do we call it where it's kind of thick and there I think that we can call that done and if you can find a spot to sign your name maybe I'll grab that little liner brush where did I put that oh where'd it go there it is I think I'll use a little Payne's gray maybe a little sap green and I'll just put my initials down here in the corner oh my brush is splitting apart and I'm gonna call that done so there you have it a light filled daffodil from behind against a bat dark background I want to thank you for watching and um, I want to thank Lisa for sharing this photo and I hope that helped you paint your daffodils thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting and thumbs up and subscribe if you like this thanks bye bye